This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, how are you? I hope you are doing all well. Uh, so now today I will explain you again covalent bonding, then we will go to electrolysis topic. Most of you know the dot cross diagram, but today I will explain it again because there, was, there were some questions about it. Uh, you had some mistakes, I mean in sharing of electrons and drawing correct structure of the compounds. So I want you to uh, I want you to be very attentive and listen up very carefully. Maybe it's not professional filming, but uh, I will try to explain you topic here, and please try to concentrate here. If uh, something will be uh, unclear, please uh, directly write to my uh, to me email or go from Google Classroom. I will try to explain you uh, what you didn't understand. Then I will share with you the worksheets from Google Classroom. Uh, about covalent bonding and electrolysis. Again, if you have a question, please contact with me. So let's start covalent bonding and electron sharing in covalent bonding that cross diagram. So as we said before, that covalent bonding, covalent bonding takes, takes place between two nanometers. How it takes place between two nanometers? Two nanometers are sharing electrons with each other. Sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons means these electrons here belong to all atoms. Not like in ion bonding. In ion bonding, electron, electrons, uh, there were transfer of electrons. Electron metal was losing electron, nonmetal was gaining electrons. But here, these elements, I mean nonmetals, will share the electrons. Covalent bonding makes uh, two uh, there are two types of covalent bonding between the elements. Covalent bonding can take with between identical elements, as we said before. Identical elements, elements, and it can take this between different elements. Different elements. Different elements. Just simple example. We know that identical elements are mostly diatomic molecules which are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, groups of elements, fluorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. These are group seven. Group seven, or we should call that as halogens, are the main salt formers or salt makers. So these are diatomic molecules. Here, the identical elements share the electrons with each other. But if covalent bonding is made different from different elements such as H2O, water, NH3, ammonia, CH4, methane, and etc. So you have to know nonmetals very well. For example, if question comes, which type of bonding are here as a multiple choice? So you have to first look through the periodic table. So because from periodic table, you will easily clarify that if bonding is made between two nonmetals, it is covalent bonding. Is if one bit is made between metal and nonmetal, so it is ionic bonding here. So let's continue here. As I said before, that all elements are making bonds to complete their outer muscle with eight electrons. Eight electron means eight electron means completed, completed octet. Only in hydrogen, if you remember, as you said as an exception, hydrogen is in the first group, it has only one electron. So to become stable like helium, hydrogen uh, has to uh, share or gain one electron here. To become stable, hydrogen needs two electrons here, totally. I mean, one electron if you gain or share, depends on you, with which element it's joining, with metal or non-metal, then it will com complete it by two electrons. So we have to be careful when we are doing that cross diagram. So what's that cross diagram? What is that cross diagram? That cross diagram is very useful for us to identify the structure of a compound, how it is useful. So as you know from the previous lessons, we have we have empirical formula, empirical formula, we have molecular formula, Molecular formula. We have now dot cross diagram or dot and cross diagram. Diagram. And we'll have a structure. 
a compound or molecule. So to identify them, we need Cross diagram. Empirical formula and molecular formulas, you know, empirical formula was simplest to make your formula. For example, let's say that we have a molecular formula of a compound C2A6. If you simplify this compound, you will get empirical formula CH3. That cross diagram, why you need here, that cross diagram is needed to draw the correct structure of the compound. For example, now we will show you the examples. You will use valence electron of carbon and hydrogen to make a cross diagram. The uh, most important uh, case is here. If you will draw correctly that cross diagram, you, it's impossible you get incorrect structure. So if that cross diagram is correct, you will get the correct structure. How you will get it? Now I will explain to you. Okay, that cross diagram. That cross diagram, to draw the that cross diagram, as we wrote before, as we wrote before, we need valence electron of an element, or we have to know its group number, as you remember. Why group number? Because group number, group number identifies the outermost electrons or valence electrons of an element. Outermost electrons or valence electrons of an element. Why valence electrons are so important? Because valence electron identifies how many bonds can element make. How reactive is this element? What's the charge on this element? Blah blah blah. These things is identified by valence electrons. So, but do we need all valence electrons in the bonding? No, exactly. We need only unpaired electrons of an element. What are the unpaired electrons? So. Let's say you want to draw a back cross diagram, and as you remember before, we have to take, for example, NH3 molecule or ammonia, other name which is ammonia. So we need here group numbers. Ammonia is in the first group, hydrogen is in the first group. So Hydrogen is in the first group. How will we draw that cross diagram? Firstly, we have to put valence electrons above the element. So the important thing is here: do not put valence electron pairs above the element. Firstly, put it one by one. Because one, if you are putting one by one, it becomes a single electron configuration. Because when electrons come in near each other or face to face, they will repel each other. Okay, so we are putting electrons one by one here. If we will put electrons one by one, then we have to look to the structure. We know that we have one nitrogen, but we, we have here three hydrogens. We have here three hydrogens. I will draw three hydrogens separately. First, second, and third hydrogen. Now, we are have to be careful. We, as we said before that in the that cross diagram, we need unpaired electrons. Electrons. So, how many unpaired electrons are in each element here? Look at the nitrogen. Nitrogen and one, two, and three. It means that nitrogen can make here three bonds, or nitrogen can share three electrons. Share three electrons here. Look at the hydrogen. Hydrogen has one, one, one. They are same element. So, to become stable, how many hydrogen needs only one? So, what can I do here logically? For each unpaired electron of nitrogen, which are three, I can share one electron from each hydrogen, which I have three hydrogens here. Then what I have to do? I have nitrogen here. Then you the shared electrons, the shared electrons, which element is most of the smaller, we are playing as a share. It's cross represents here how we are playing the electrons. So nitrogen electrons are here. I will write again nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five. Please practice it at home because again, I'm beginning. We have to put electrons one by one here, not as pairs. So for each electron of nitrogen, share electrons of hydrogen. First hydrogen sharing. This cross here represents sharing. Sharing electrons. Sharing. Second hydrogen shared electron and third hydrogen has shared electron is the nitrogen. Then what we have to do? Then 
you have to be capable that and you, you have to be sure that each element has completed its outer motion. If they are not, if they didn't complete the outer motion, it means your structural back cross diagram is incorrect. So a wrong back cross diagram brings to wrong structure. So what we have to do? Then I will erase it if you understood. Then I have to take electrons of each element, nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, it has to start. To become stable, it needs three, and three electrons were shared by hydrogen. One, two, three. So I have the total electrons of nitrogen like this. Total is eight, because nitrogen to become stable has to complete its upper motion by eight electrons. Hydrogen. First hydrogen electrons, one it had, second one was shared with nitrogen. This one had shared with the nitrogen, and this one had shared with the hydrogen here. So what was ha uh, what has happened here? Then after the drawing correct that cross diagram, you will be able to see that how many electrons were shared between each elements. Let's see. Between nitrogen and first nitrogen and hydrogen, we have two electrons shared. Here we have two electrons shared. Here we have two electrons shared. So what this two electrons says to us? Remember that one single bond is made by using two electrons, one single bond. So if we have two, two, two electrons between each other, so it means our structure will contain only single bonds. Our structure will contain only single bonds. In that cross diagram, we don't need to put this um, pair, uh, paired electrons or long pair of electrons of the nitrogen. Let me write it for you. Long pairs, which are the long pairs, long pairs, this is important. Do not take part, take part in bonding. Long pairs do not take part in bonding. Okay, so this is the that cross diagram of ammonia and critical molecular formula, and this is the structure of ammonia. This is the structure of ammonia or this is the first example. Then let's continue. How many minutes we have? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's continue. Let's try another example. As we said before, for example. C2H6. You will have the inorganic chemistry, it's a same molecule, which is hydrocarbon. How can I write it that cross diagram? Easiest way. So, because the empirical formula is very important for us here, this is the molecular formula of the compound. Molecular, this is the molecular formula of the compound. But to write it that correct that cross diagram, what I need here, I have to know that. How many hydrogens are were joined to each carbon here? How can I identify it? Simplify it to or make it empirical formula. How you make it empirical formula? Simplify by two. So you will go ahead here, CHC, which is empirical. Empirical formula. Empirical formula will show you that for each carbon, how many hydrogens will join. For each carbon, how many hydrogens will join? So let's see. As you see from here that. You're, you are not changing the compound's formula. You are only making its empirical formula. So you, this is for you just, just to make the uh, ways, uh, to make the things easy. You don't have to write this one. You just plan it here. Yes, for one carbon, I will join three hydrogens. So let's put carbons here. First carbon. Carbon is in the fourth group. Hydrogen is in the first group. Carbon at one, two, three, four electrons. Yes. For first carbon, how many hydrogens I have to join? Three. So, first hydrogen, as you know from before, the hydrogen is one electron, two, three hydrogen. I have finished with the first carbon, as I said before. Second carbon, one, two, three, four. And again, second carbon has to join three hydrogen. Again, one, two, and three hydrogens. Now, 
But between the carbons, between the carbons, they will be what? Sharing of electron. Sharing of electron. So let's check is it correct or not. How we are checking it's correct or not by calculating its number of electrons, total number of electrons, which has to be eight or two. Two is in hydrogen. So let's see. Carbon at one, two, three, four. So it has to gain or share four electrons, or other element has to share with carbon to make it eight. So for it have five, six, seven, and this is the eighth electron, which second carbon share with the first carbon. So total electrons of first carbon, I will take like this. Total electrons for first carbon. Second carbon is the same. It has four and it has shared electrons with this. So then hydrogens are very easy. One it had, one it had two, one it had two. One it had two and one it had two. Let me just make it clear. Uh -huh. that two. So what has happened here? As you see that between each element, carbon and hydrogen, uh, by the way, between the carbons, there are only two electrons shared. Everywhere there are, there are two electrons shared. So what will be my structure formula or my structure? Carbon, H, H, H. Carbon, H, H, and H. This is the structure of SA molecule or C2H6. C2H6. SA molecule or C2H6. So the other dot cross diagrams, as I said before, they have to be like this. I, I've shared it with you. You can practice at home. Simple covalent molecules, for example, hydrogen, we drew them. Chlorine, hydrogen chloride differently. Okay, let's for example work out one example from water molecule. How the water molecule, how we draw the structure like of water, and then write its structure formula. Okay, let's see now. Water is a two the same molecular and empirical formula. So well, I have to know its group number. Hydrogen, first group, oxygen, sixth group, again. Uh -huh. So I write central atom here. What's central atom? Central atom, you're identifying by yourself. As you see that, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. So it means hydrogen will join to the oxygen. Because there are two hydrogens. So you will write oxygen in the middle. Oxygen has six electrons. Put electrons again, one by one, then start to pair there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It doesn't matter where you will put electrons. It, the most important thing that don't forget that first you will start putting electrons one by one. So what we see from here, each uh, oxygen has here two unpaired electrons. Unpaired electrons. It means that oxygen can make two bonds here. But what about the hydrogen? Hydrogen has only one electron. Unpaired electron. So hydrogen can make only one more. So what can we do logically? If I have two hydrogens here, put the oxygen in the middle. Each unpaired electron, first unpaired electron of oxygen, second unpaired of electron oxygen. So how many electrons left as a lone pair or paired electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then join this or pair with the electrons of hydrogen with oxygen. First hydrogen, second hydrogen. Then circle all electrons for something. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Totally, each hydrogen and oxygen will have these electrons here. So what I have observed here, again, between oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogens, there are two electrons shared. So what's the good? We'll, what will be our structure formula? O H H. This is the structure formula of the water molecule. So as you see that water and hydrogen complete its outermost shell. So NH3 example, CH4. Let's look to the carbon dioxide. Let's look to the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide molecule, CO2. 
Carbon is in the fourth group, oxygen is in the sixth group. So what will happen here? Let's start. Again, centrally, it is for us is carbon because two oxygen will join to the carbon. So carbon has one, two, three, four. What you can easily remember about the carbon, or what you have to remember about the carbon, that as you see, that carbon has four unpaired electrons. So elements which are in the group of carbon, or just simply carbon, has to make always four bonds. It is the property of the carbon, like in, for example, diamond. So what's going to happen to carbon? Carbon has four electrons, oxygen. I write one oxygen here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Second oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's see what is going on here. Carbon has one, two, three, four ampere electrons. Oxygen, one, two here. And this is again one, two, three. So logically, what can I do? These two electrons of oxygen I can share with this carbon. These two electrons of oxygen I can share these electrons of carbon. So let's try. Remember that always put uh, unpaired electrons or the electron which will make a bond in front of them. So it will be easy to make a dark cross diagram. Then the structure. How? Carbon. This, it will share two electrons with these atoms. So, so put these electrons here. Second oxygen, put these electrons to the other side of the carbon. So this oxygen, it has to share two electrons. Again, put shared electrons in front of the carbon. One, let's draw this different color. One, two, how many left? Three, four, five, six. Second oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let's check if we do correct or not. How will check again? Okay. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a total of carbon has here eight electrons. First oxygen, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, the same, the same in the other oxygen. So what we can easily see here, if you again, if you drew the dark person correctly, you can see how many electrons are shared here. So here we have four electrons. Here we have four electrons. If one bond equals two electrons, so it means we have here double bond. How carbon stays in the middle, so double bond for each oxygen. So this is the structure of carbon dioxide here. Structure of carbon dioxide here. So about the dot cross diagram, we have finished. Then we will go to the other video material.